There are a lot of diseases in every crop, but one disease that seems to have devastated soybean acres all across the United States this year was sudden death syndrome. We're going to talk about that today, especially because a lot of farmers don't know really what it is, why it's caused, and how to stop it. When you get something new, a new problem that comes into your fields, you don't want it to wipe out your crop. You want to be able to be prepared to deal with that right away. Well, sudden death syndrome is one of those diseases that's moved in over the last few years and it is growing in acres, but this year turned out to be the perfect storm for sudden death syndrome, why? especially why? through Iowa and into Illinois. Here's why. For any disease to get going, it needs the three parts of the disease triangle to really take over. First of all, you must have a susceptible host and many of the popular soybean varieties out there planted through those maturities in the group twos and group threes were pretty susceptible to sudden death syndrome. Then you also have to have the pathogen. So you have to have some inoculum for a disease to be out in the field. And it's a fungus, this disease. This one is a, actually a fusarium fungus. And then finally, you need to have the right environment. And this is why I say we had the perfect storm this year. We've had a little bit of sudden death syndrome. Some areas have had more than others, but it's been out there. We're still planting susceptible hosts. And this year we got exactly the right environment where we're getting plentiful rainfall. We're not getting extremely high high temperatures through the summer. We didn't have that week where it was 100 degrees every day for a week. And so we had kind of nice warm temperatures with wet conditions starting early in the season. It was just a bad, bad deal for sudden death syndrome. Okay, talk about planting date. Okay, this year we got in really early. We started planting corn April the 10th. The entire United which, States got in really early. Which for our area, April 10th is really early to be planting corn. So the soybeans, after the corn was planted, the soybeans were going in early as well. So a lot of guys that normally plant May 1st were planting April 15th. Or a lot of guys, uh, like in our area, that normally would plant May 15th were planting May 1st. So soybeans were out there early. They were sitting in that cool, wet soil for quite a while. As soon as they started growing, it was reasonably cool and also wet. So it had a lot of time for that fusarium fungus to get into that plant. And with sudden death syndrome, it actually gets in really early in the year and a lot of times won't show itself until you get later on in the summer, like mid-July into August. Okay, so anyway, Darren's point is plant later. My point is I'm going to disagree with it entirely. We don't know for well, sure this year, Brad, what weather conditions are going to be like next year. So right now you're probably hearing from different universities, oh, you need to plant on May 15th instead of doing this May 1st or April 20th thing. I, you know, maybe... Okay, but we don't know when the, that certain weather is going to hit us next year. If you plant a more tolerant variety and you plant real early, maybe you'll be just fine. Heck, even if you plant a susceptible variety, we don't know for sure that disease is going to be there this year. Well, it, was, next it year. was really interesting to see this year. That planting date made a huge difference. And if you're planting early for your area, you've got more risk. Now, I can't tell you for sure that next year planting May 1st, if that's yeah, but early let's for your solve area, that problem is going right to be now. a problem. Hey, let's solve we the have, problem right now. Put some seed treatment on and spray fungicide a couple of times. That, that does not solve the problem. That you, does not you, control if, sudden death syndrome. If you, that controls if got, all the other diseases going But that's going to make it more tolerant to sudden death. It's going to help you a little bit, but it's kind of a false <laughs> sense of security thinking that that's going to stop so, sudden death syndrome. So you think if that by, if, I put, if, right, I put a, if I put a seed treatment on and I sprayed fungicide twice post-emerge that I wouldn't do probably a 80-90% job that of that this year still had problems. That's all not, I can tell you. Not the as farmers, big a problem. The though. farmers that had that still had problems. And, and you'll see the same thing on your farm. You can't solve sudden death syndrome that way. You yeah, just can't do it. I, I disagree. I think that you can for the most part. I'm not saying 100% percent but I'm just saying 80 90 percent you can because there is no farmer that sprayed twice you tell me one farmer that sprayed fungicide twice in his soybeans this year post emerge plus had a fungicidal seed treatment out nobody did that you do that and you're well on your way to stopping sudden death syndrome well that's going to help the other thing is good drainage when we're talking yep. about different funguses that are going to attack early in the season this is a real big thing if you've got wet soils and you don't have proper drainage underneath it your crop is just going to sit there with wet feet for a long period of time even in different areas of the field. We saw problems with SDS where there was compaction. That's another thing that you can do to fix problems on your farm, especially around the end rows and along the waterways. This is where we saw the SDS starting this year. So clean up those compacted areas. 
improve your drainage in your fields, follow those other steps, you're well on your way to keeping sudden death syndrome out of your soybeans next year. Yep, so once again, with sudden death syndrome, yes, it devastated millions of acres around the country, but it doesn't have to do that on your farm next year. Just follow these management steps. And another thing, if you want to stop or at least slow down SDS is you should have good weed control so your, your soybean varieties have better overall plant health. We'll talk about how to stop this weed coming up later in the show.